Yo, it's Smallmouth Crush. This is going to be a really cool video series. An experience like no other when it comes to tournament fishing. I've decided to sign up and fish the Bassmaster Northern Opens this year. The first one on the James River. The second event on Oneida Lake. And then the third on Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River. So it's a really, hmm, I mean, two out of three killer schedule for me. But we got to survive the mighty James. And I wanted to walk through the process, the whole process. So I want to document this whole, I guess, adventure throughout the year. And we're going to bring some really cool personalities, information, really a behind the scenes look at what goes down when it comes to tournament bass fishing, because this is the opens, which is a pretty big deal. Costs a lot of money to enter. There's a lot on the line. It allows you to qualify for the Bassmaster Elite Series, a potential at the Bassmaster Classic. And so I want to really document how I'm going to approach this, this tournament, these, these three tournaments. And the first step is to figure out your game plan and how you're going to approach these bodies of water. And one of my ways of approaching uh, a body of water, like, like fish in the opens, is I like to team up with um, other anglers that I can trust and that I feel comfortable working with just to help that learning curve, um, bounce ideas off of each other, and hopefully put us in position to do well in all three of these opens. Now, I'm not going to say I put together the dream team by any means. Believe me, these dudes got some work cut out for them. So do I, okay? So do I. But I decided to join them. Uh, Tom Nee, 12-pound Tom Nee. You guys know he's a one-hit wonder. He won a Ike charity event on the Chesapeake Bay. Back in 2020, won a brand new boat. But other than that, mm, you know, with Tom, we're going to help him. We're going to help him cash checks this year. That's the goal. At least that's my goal I have for him. JP, man, I wouldn't want to deal with JP if I was on Lake Champlain or perhaps Oneida or some of these other bodies of water. But I don't know. Get him out of his comfort zone. We'll see. Does he have some tricks up his sleeves? We're going to find out. It's going to be exciting. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just messing. I'm just messing with everyone. But here's the cool part. JP and Tom Nee have never met before until today when I bring them on this little conference call. So we're actually going to uh, – this video is really the start of the Bassmaster Open series sponsored by God Joe Bates. And we're going to talk about all the, all the drama, everything. We're going to get into it. I just noticed – 12 pound Tom knee popped on and we got JP. So let's get it going. That's all coming up. All right, we're back. Let's do it. Let's bring on. First of all, we're bringing JP on. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Rohin? <laughs> JP, I'm excited for this uh this little this little adventure that we have planned this year. Um are you gonna be growing? What do you call that? What do you got on your face? What is that? Uh, my wife calls this the uh, handlebar mustache, but this is probably coming off. Today. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. You had me worried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with we you. We got a picture of my mother and father at a wedding back in uh the early early 90s late 80s and my father had a mustache like this so okay fair I enough figured i'd rock it for a weekend i like it i like it so we got a lot to discuss here uh really what we're gonna do is is share with everybody kind of uh the journey uh for the year tom i know it's just popped off but he's in the background lurking i'd like to bring him on here but i'm not sure if he's quite prepared so we'll wait for tom to get back in and uh yeah so what are your thoughts we we had a little issue signing up for these opens um funny story i want to wait for tom to pop on to talk about that but uh, we had to jump through a little hoop or two 
maybe a little added expense on our part, at least for me to sign up for, for the opens to make sure we, we get in, but we'll see what happens. All right, JP, we're going to bring Tom in. Okay. And there he is. What's up? What's up? Wow. You look pretty good, Tom. Well, what'd you say? You look professional. Oh, thanks, man. I, was, that, I, was that fishing professional or was that like corporate America? Corporate. You look corporate. Sorry, pal. JP's backwoods today and I'm kind of in between. What's up, JP? <laughs> yeah, you guys, fishing? you guys never met. Yeah. Um No, nah, we met. We met that in that biker bar. Oh yeah, we brought yeah. that guy up. I like that, man. <laughs> yeah, you like that guy with the bike, he wants it off. I said that's gotta come off, otherwise he's not part of the team. <laughs> I like it, man. It's good. Well, nice to meet you, man. I'm from uh, Pennsylvania. All right. And, I'm uh, in New York. All right, cool. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm most I'm most notably known as 12 Pound Tom as it pertains to Small Mouth Brush YouTube channel. So, you know, you can just call me Tom, though. Okay. So his nickname came about just because in, in a lot of tournaments, uh, you know, he struggled to hit that 12 pound mark you know, bringing those fish into the scale. And so that's kind of how he acquired the name. So a little shaky team. I mean, guys, listen, we're up against like, we're up against like Matt from BTL and Bradley Hallman and, and uh, you know, Scott Martin, you know, dream teams like that are being put together right now. Yeah. And I heard your intro and it makes me want to just go and ask for my refund back. You know what? I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it happen. Um, and you guys all know this is all good and fun. Okay. I, I went, I went to pick you guys or you guys went to chose me if I thought there'd be some issues, but all right. So let's talk about our experience. So we, we, we signed up, we were able to get in, uh, to the opens. I had to do, I, I was worried because I thought that the, um, you know, I thought that the field might be full or there'll be a lot of people wanting to fish. So I bought the Lifetime Bass membership for $500. That would allow me to sign up on the first day that it's available for Life members. And all I pretty much got was a shitty hat and some Strike King crankbaits. JP, you what about you? No, not yet. No, me neither. I did the $500 Life membership too, only because I've fished the Bassmaster Opens in the past and... Normally, you're sitting on a waiting list until about a month before the tournament actually starts. Mm -hmm. So I forked up the money, too, and uh, and then signing up was a pain because I kept getting booted off. I know. It all worked out. I mean, we all got in. I already got my confirmation emails. I think both of you guys did, too, right? So Yes. Yeah. Tom, did you sign up as a Bass member as well? Yeah, like two weeks before, I signed up as a Bass member. Lifetime membership, uh, not taking any chances when it comes to getting registered for this thing. And just like you guys, the experience with the online registration was like, I missed, I think I missed like three or four meetings at work. I'm like, I was totally, I, I think I was totally more committed to this than even you, Travis. Like we mm -hmm. were on the phone for an hour and 47 minutes. You were on the phone with Bass. I was, I was attempting to register by my phone, by my laptop. Uh, we probably contributed to crashing the entire system, to be honest. Yeah, but I think so. I had two browsers going on. Um, two hours later, I was finally able to sign in. But here's my point. If anyone's looking at fish in the opens for the following year and you are determined to get in, you know, it sucks. It's $500 for that lifetime membership, but it allows you to at least get a secured spot and you know, at least we don't ever have to pay that again. And you get the Bassmaster magazine. I mean, how cool is that? Now, if we all do our part and, you know, finish in the top 25, you're pretty much guaranteed from here on out. So, yes, yes. Good point. So let's kind of talk about forming a team because it's a it's a critical component when you are fishing uh, any tournament, especially a series like these. It's important to be able to find a handful of guys that work together well. I've had some really good teammates in the past. Uh, Matt Stasiak, I've worked with. We've worked real well together. And, you know, just recently, uh, last year in the FLW event, uh, the championship on Lake Cumberland, I met, I worked with Matt, and we it worked out real well. He took second, and I think I took fifth. Uh, so being able to work with someone that you trust is really important. Here's the cool part, guys. 
you know, Matt and or Tom and JP didn't know each other prior to this, and they kind of trusted my judgment. So I thank you guys as far as, you know, how I want to form this team because, you know, if it was the other way around, I might have more questions. You know, if Tom came to me and said, hey, you know, I'm working with this JP guy, what do you, you know, I'd be like, well, let's see. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's the deal here, Tom? Who is this guy? So I appreciate you at least uh, – Trusting my judgment, my group of guys that I hang around with and share information here and there is pretty solid. And so I, you know, I joke about maybe experience levels with you guys just a little bit, just to have fun. But I think you guys are going to be great. I think we're going to be able to put together some really good uh, networking and, and be able to figure out these, these bodies of water because one person, it's very difficult to break down that water for a week of practice to go out and and catch these fish. All right, picking the perfect uh, team for this is really, really important. Uh, here's how we're going to go about it. Um, and let me know if you guys agree with this, but in the past, and what, what I like to do is we get to a body of water. First of all, there's going to be a lot of planning up until that point. You know, we're going to do our research. The first and foremost is, is lake study from your home, okay? That's looking at maps, that's looking at Google Earth, that's buying paper maps, that's looking at past tournament results, that's YouTubing, uh, you know, type in James River bass fishing and watch Bubba cast a, a spinnerbait along the bank. At least that gives you a visual. You know, he might not know what he's doing, but now you have a visual of that body of water, especially if you've never been there. You can pick out things like a rip rock, you know, rocks on the bank and lay downs. You kind of see the layout. It's just hours and hours of, of endless studying and time that you can really put into it and we want to see what tournament results are so in the past what to shoot for you know uh, if it's a tidal water you want to kind of know what the tides are going to be during that event and so there's a lot of pre-planning buzzwords i like to write down buzzwords you know if you keep hearing uh you're talking about say plastics and and black and blue keeps coming up or june bug or you know watermelon with gold in it those are things that you want to take note of and then say, you know what? I might want to get my favorite flipping bait in this particular color because that terminology keeps coming up in my research. And so we're going to do all of that before we even get to these bodies of water. And then at some point we'll have another meeting where we just kind of go over all of our notes and what we kind of found out and form a game plan. Now, unfortunately, a lot of this really is going to be determined by, you know, the fish position is going to be determined by the, the weather and the time of the year. One event we're right near or after the spawn. The other event's going to be a late summer uh, or a summer event. And the other one will be a late summer event. So there's going to be a lot of things that we have to keep in mind when we're trying to, you know, nail down particular patterns that might come into play. So that's going to be our homework between now and then. Uh, for you guys that are watching this video now, this is this is actually in January when we're meeting. Our first tournament is until May, but that's the kind of time that you're going to need to start putting in some research for these bodies of water. Some of us, a lot of us, I think all of us have been to every body of water that we're fishing. So that's a cool, that's awesome. That's a good start. Now, right away when, when, I, when I signed up for the Opens, one thing to keep in mind is lodging. I don't like to roll up in a hotel setting during long six, seven day practice and events. Um, I hate the parking. I hate, you know, walking up two flights of stairs with all my gear every night. It's just a pain. So we decided to rent a home. So we did that research because guess what? We actually booked these houses before we even signed up for the open and got confirmation because this week and next week and every weekend and up until the tournament guys are going to be looking for lodging and some of these places there is not a lot of options you might find the perfect house and i found a few where three boats isn't going to work you know three rigs in the driveway it isn't going to work so there's a lot that goes into it and it, you want to be convenient and i'll go as far as finding places like i obviously want to know how far where i'm staying to the ramp where we're taking off I want to be able to get addresses prior to even getting down there of other alternative ramps that we can use in practice. I'll go as far as finding out where the gas stations are and, and what's available in that area. So I, I know what I'm getting into before I even get there. Does that make sense to you guys? Tackle shops. T good point. Yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, tackle shops, having the address of that place written down. So if you need to do a, 
overnight delivery. You got it right there. I've called Tackle Warehouse over the phone many times on the water. I don't know if you guys have too in the tournament. You know, hey man, I need these Strike King Series Five and you know, sexy shad. And so that's just what kind of what 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 you do to you know hopefully gain a little bit of edge. So once we have all that squared away, the 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 team that you know when you form a team, you have to trust the guys, and pretty much everything goes. So this is how I've done in the past. We go out there and we share everything that evening when we come in. I say, hey, I caught a fish here, here, here. It's not just spots. It's not on fishing wood. It's this is the stretch I caught him on, and here's what I'm doing. Or one guy's like, I didn't do shit today, but this is what I did. This is the baits I threw. And so what happens is I always look at it this way. The person that finds that group of fish. So let's say JP finds a, a hundred yard stretch on a grass line that just loaded up with fish. He shares that information with us. Not so we can go back to that spot and beat up those fish all week. It's to try to expand on that. But let's say just hypothetically, if, if we got to tournament day, and myself and Tom str are still struggling, and JP's got those fish on that grass line. Well, guess what? He's the one that found it. He's going to those fish, and we're not going to touch it. You know, we have an agreement prior to going into these events. Now, a lot of times, so some bodies of water, JP might have found those fish, and then we have a talk. Hey, you guys aren't doing shit. This stretch is going to be good. For, you know, we can all sit there. If it's a, let's say it's on the Great Lakes or something, and you find a massive school of smallmouth. Hey, you guys are welcome. We're working together. Let's fish this and see how we end up. So there's different scenarios that come into play. Uh, you know, one good thing is maybe we all have fish and we all decide to go our fish, our strengths or whatever you're, you're comfortable with. But guess what, Tom? Hey, listen, I know if your, if your stuff doesn't work out by 10 o'clock, you know, I'm going to be kind of hopefully set up in this area. I don't mind you swinging in, you know, talk to me, see how your day's going, how I'm doing. And if, if there's, if we can work it out, get your butt in here and try to salvage the day. If you can, does that make sense for you guys? Absolutely. I think that's what you have to do. So many times people will form a team and then it's, it's still secrets between the three. You know what I mean? Like one guy says one thing or one guy wants to be all cocky and, and I've seen this a hundred times. You know, they want to be like, yeah, I'm on them. And then you try to, you have to like drill them and you feel like a, an asshole, you know, trying to get, get down to the, you know, simple things like, okay, what color, you know, just give me that. And it gets really, <laughs> you know, we've all been there. It, it really gets crazy. So we got to just be open about everything we're doing and then, you know, just kind of decide with all three of us how we're going to approach all of this and that's just going to make us a lot better and way keyed in come tournament day if we know what other what other guys are really doing and what you know how we can adjust comments thoughts yeah i i'll tell you um you know jp i think that i probably describe quite a bit how i'm catching them and and where i'm at and what i'm doing and what baits are working um, I probably go into way too much description when it comes to sharing information, but I, I do that deliberately because I feel like I want you to know the cadence of the bait that I'm throwing. Like I want you to know how it's how it's hitting that structure or that or that or that grass. Like, am I mm -hmm. popping it? Am I dragging it? Is it nice and slow? Is it you know all of these things play a role in how I catch fish. And I'll describe them as best I can. And, and any questions, you got to ask them because um, I, to Travis's point, it's like you, it, it could just be the littlest thing that's going to trigger that fish to eat. And, and that's what we got to get dialed in on. Mm -hmm. All right. No, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Uh, last summer, uh, me and Travis did somewhat uh, work together through the ABAs there. And uh, it was a good relationship. You know, we were both open back and forth. He helped me out. Uh, and we were at the, uh, the thousand islands event there. And, uh, I thought I was helping us out on Cayuga, but that really didn't end up. Mm. Out at all. Yeah, dude. I know. Honestly, <laughs> that was, that, that's a good point. I totally forgot about Cayuga cause I kind of wanted to forget that event, but, um, yeah, you dialed me right in uh, as far as we were about a week off of, of what we, you know, of that pattern. 
but it's better than you know. I would have, I wouldn't have had a clue either way. So JP, <laughs> JP, I died up there, man. Like I, I, oh, I think I caught three fish a day, man. It was brutal. That was a BFL yeah, you fished. We fished and, uh, the ABA was the worst. Me and my friend Mike went up there the week before, and we caught twenty pounds. I mean, like in the first hour, and then I caught fish the rest of the day, and it was really good. And I was like, man, this is going to really work out, you know. And went rolling into the practice. I think that we fished for. I think I fished for two days and I only caught one fish the first day, but it was five pounds. And then I caught a seven pounder the second day doing the same things, but hitting different areas. So I really thought that I wasn't going to have an issue catching five bass and, um, man, to struggle the whole day and zero at the end of the day was really discouraging, but we've all been there and it happened. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but the information was there and I'm, I'm definitely down for, you know, getting the three of us together and trying to push through this so i don't think i i, I think this is going to be a, a good group of guys here us three uh going out there doing this we all have certain strengths uh you know i feel what i can bring to the table is a lot of experience on lake ontario pretty good experience on oneida and um no experience on james that time of the year but i've been there a handful of times i've done well in the fall there and I'm going to probably bring my finesse game with you, you know, and, and share those techniques with you guys. That's probably what, what I, 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 you guys know, I feel comfortable with the spin around my hand in most events. And so, you know, JP, what do you think your strengths would be to this team? I think that Oneida Lake is a, a, a really good strength of mine. Uh, the lake's been very good to me over the years. Um, it sure has changed, you know, in the last four to five years, but I'm still able to go there and put a good bag together, you know, pretty consistently. And uh, I've been to the James a few times. You know, I'm a big flipper, top water, power fisherman. I like fishing like that. It's my comfort zone, and uh, I can bring I can bring that to the table for sure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And Tom, what do you think about you know your experience and what what your techniques would be that that you could bring? I can bring the beer. I can. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I, I, I seriously, I, 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 bring, I seriously bring a, a solid beer selection to, to, to that's any true. event. So, that's true. Um, be okay. sure. Yeah. So let, let me know IPAs, whatever, whatever, okay. whatever you're into. Okay. Uh, I, oh, as it relates to fishing. Yes. 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 Um, I would say that, that I have a lot of confidence with, with some moving baits like chatter baits and swim jigs, um, fish and grass. Uh, I would mm -hmm. say that that's probably, it's probably my, my biggest strength. So, uh, can't, can't say I can bring a lot to, uh, Oneida, but, uh, I, I have fished thousand islands quite a bit and, uh, feel pretty confident with a drop shot in my hand. Um, but yeah, I would say, I would say I could use probably the most help in Oneida and, uh, certainly would take any, any direction and advice and on the James river. But, uh, mm -hmm. well, the one thing is you, you know, you have title experience too, quite a bit. You fish the Chesapeake Bay a lot. Um, and you know, obviously the James is title. So I think you have that strength as well. I know you do some sneaky stuff uh, on the Chesapeake. So hopefully we can kind of expand on that when we, when we head For down sure. to the James, but really all this, we got to just do some really hardcore studying and following up to this event because i'm serious it could be i'm not quite sure yet because i haven't done the research we could be faced with a full-out spawning event or a post-spawn event or we could have a mixture of both i don't want to rule out the spawn and i'm not going to until we get closer into the year um i've seen fish on the chesapeake spawn well into june and july okay when that big spawn was done normally by May, end of May. So those there's always fish that time in the spring spawning. And remember, these are Florida strain um, bass, a lot of them in the James too. So they may be spawning a little bit later, um, perhaps. I'm just guessing here. But I have my hopes that it's going to be a little bit of uh, end of the spawn, post-spawn, a little bit tougher bite. Okay. I, I, I like that because I don't like it when the whole field's just easily out there catching them because I can easily mess up on a pattern or something. And, and I, I've seen myself in those situations where when everyone's catching them and you're on a new body of water that you're really not familiar with, 
you can miss out on that. I feel I can excel when it's a tough grind and I find a couple things that might key me in. And then I just, I'll, I'll focus on that. You're going to see me throughout that week. Probably I'm hoping again, I'm going to let the situation dictate, but if I can find a one or two areas to settle down in with my finesse experience, that's what I'm going to hope to be able to do where JP might want to put that pop and frog or a top water in his hand and just go to town all day, which is perfectly fine. Um, you might want to throw your swim jig and chatterbait around. You you were pretty methodical when you thought about this team. I think I think uh, I think he was putting a couple things together before we even knew it. JP. Maybe maybe yeah, right? <laughs> I I think he yeah he thought this one through. Well, I think it's a good. I do think it's a good. Uh, that, that's definitely a good team. You know, like I said, we're up against. Don't fool yourself. There's three, four, five guys that are doing the same thing here in the next couple of months that are going to be sharing information like this. There's going to be guys that are going to form a team, and it's going to be a weak link in there, meaning you're going to have a mole in that in that group. All this stuff goes down, dude. Like this is real life. This is what you can expect. There's going to be people that form a team that with strangers or you know a guy across the country that they haven't fished with, and they're going to realize. You know, this guy uses and abuses that relationship. And unfortunately, that's what happens all the time. I don't care if it's at the elite series level with alliances being formed and falling apart. You see that all the time. And I don't want to get into names specifically, but shit like that happens. And so I think we're we're pretty confident this is a solid group here. So, Travis, like I got I got a question for you. So when you see that happening. Right. So when you see shit going sideways within a team and, and, and the information's not flowing like it should, what do you feel like is the number one thing that gets into an angler's head that would prompt that thing to go sideways? That whole relationship, it just goes. Well, I think it's just already the character of the person you're bringing on already. They just that's kind of their their motive. A lot of people use people for information, you know, their buddies with them. They're, they're they just they take but they don't give and, and sometimes they give just a little to make you still think you're you know they could tell you you could tell someone to totally different but sometimes especially today with cameras and stuff the truth kind of comes out eventually you know i might someone might tell you you know i'm catching him on a topwater frog in this area and it might be that area but he's not throwing a frog he's throwing a Senko or something. And it's like, oh, well, I had to switch up. I mean, we see that with pros, you know, a lot of shaky relationships over the years on, on tour with guys that are tight. And then all of a sudden you see something happens and they're not really, they're not rooming together the next year, you know, but that's unfortunate, but I don't think we're going to have a problem with this. I'm just saying that so people are aware in the future, what to look for. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. it makes sense to me, man. But I'm excited. We got our rooms booked. We got a lot of work to do. And uh, now it's just a, a matter of putting in our time and, and energy. We plan on going. Uh, I think what's going to happen, guys, is we're going to have a video uh, set up in everyone's boat. Of course, I'll, I'll have uh, we're going to grab clips from each of our practices every day. Uh, we're not going to be doing these uh, uh, during the event. These video series will come out after the tournament. But it'll probably be you're going to see three or four videos in a row every day come out of our practice. And then we're going to uh, basically video our, our tournaments afterwards, our thoughts on how it went down. And hopefully we um, hopefully we got some really good uh, information to share with you, regardless of how we end up in the event. You know, at least you'll see how how the whole thing goes down. So nightly meetings, we're going to come together at the end of the practice day. Uh, and make a video and recap everything that that went down so you guys can watch that. So I'm super excited about this series and uh, looking forward to it. We'll probably get back at you guys um, just prior to us getting ready to head down one little meet and we'll kind of discuss some of the things and, and share with our, our viewers of what some of the information and some of the ways we think we're going to be able to catch them when we get down to the James River in May. And again, man, I'm excited. 2021. Let's let's do it. What's our goals here? I want to know that. Um, Tom, let's let me hear your goal. What what are you looking to accomplish by fishing the opens? You know, I think um, 
you know, I thought about this. I thought about this five minutes before this call because, you know, what, what, the fuck? what? was that funny? No, I, I've been thinking about this for weeks before okay. we even register. But even after okay. five minutes before this call, it's, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I want to do well. I, mm -hmm. I, I personally want to, I, I want to, I want to crack a top 25. I want to crack a top 10. I want to, I want to put myself in a position to qualify for the elite series. Okay. I can't say I'll commit to fishing the elite series, but I, I, I want that option. Gotcha. Gotcha. JP. I, I'm in it for the classic. I, uh, I was so close mm. back in 2011. I took third place at the uh, Oneida event. It was the same format, fish all three tournaments, win one and you're in. And uh, I knew I couldn't win because Ish Monroe had caught um, such a big bag the first day that I it, mathematically I was out. But um, but it was close, and uh, I liked that feeling. I I know I can't fish the Elite Series. I, I, I could never make that happen, but I'm in it for the Classic. So I really want to put my best, for, my best foot forward to win one, and I want to finish in the top 25 so that I don't have to sit there um, with the computer crashing next year trying to get through. Mm. Very good. I want to, hmm, I want to see if I can still compete, okay? Because uh, I just, I don't know if my f past four or five years fishing the FLW Opens and, and my BFL track record, I want to know if that was a fluke or not. And I took a year off, okay? And I want to see what kind of damage I can do. I'm not looking forward to the work, okay? I hate that part. I hate the part of wasted this is how I look at it. It's for me, you're gonna put me on the James River in May. And it might be good fishing, but man, I'd rather be up on the you know the St. Lawrence River jacking on smallmouth, having fun, not worrying. So it's work. And if I get a shot, if I'm if I'm if I can survive the James River, okay. Um, I think I'll be really focused on the final two events. If I it's going to go two ways. It's going to go. I had a good finish on the James. I'm in contention. I have a shot because I'm familiar with these two bodies of water to perhaps qualify for the elite series again. If I bomb on the James, what's a good finish? What's a good finish on the James? I think you're going to, I, I think I need to get paid. So 40th Absolutely. probably or better, you know, to have a shot at, at you'd still be, man, if you take like 35th, Man, that it's still a gamble to try to do well in those next two to get in to get that elite invite. But guess what? If I bomb on the James, then my sole focus is going to be a little different. It's going to be to win the next two events any way possible. So it's really going to be determined on that first event, and that's kind of that's what gets me excited. I'm not excited to go to the James. Okay, I'll admit it. That's going to be a weakness of mine. But if I can survive it, then we're going to see what happens. If I suck at it, I'm not going to let it get me down because I'm going to come strong, try to figure out how to catch a 20-plus 20, 20 pound bag of Oneida smallmouth in July. <laughs> They're there, bro. Is that bro. possible? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it wow. will be this year. I think it will be. It's going to be a little tough in July, but I think it will. It definitely could happen. So there you go. Uh, Tom, well, do you eat venison? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm bringing a Yeti full of venison. JP hooks us up with the food. Yep. Tom hooks up the beer. And I set all this up, man. I make sure we got the best houses, the best <laughs> driveways, true. the best parking. I got it all. Yeah, I think we're our, and we're waterfront, right? Uh, Oneida. Yeah, Oneida's waterfront. Yeah. yeah, we're right there. That's amazing. We're back canal, but we'll be no, there. It's, it's, it's money, man. I'm looking forward to it, guys. So... Again, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out and uh, at least forming this game plan and, and sharing our experiences with all the uh, the viewers of the channel. Hopefully, we're going to bring some good content moving forward in 2021, and uh, you can watch the whole experience unfold. All right, guys. I look forward to sharing the future videos with you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.